Hi once again. Welcome to episode 805, 805 that is. The topic of today is going to go deep, I suspect. Yesterday was kind of light, today's kind of deep, they flip flop sometimes. So today's topic is um, titled, Who Do You Think You Are? How this question affects every relationship. So I hope it's got you intrigued because I want to unpack this because I don't really know where it's going to go yet, but I know it's going to go somewhere good. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day and a bit more about what I'm passionate about. My name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't seen that radio somewhere in the broadcast. I am the author of the best-selling book, and I guess that means me a best-selling author, of 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, about love and relationships that help you have a better relationship or create a better relationship. It works either way. I'm also an inspirational speaker and a love and relationship expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work around this work with women, or informs my work with women, it's more direct, and also informed and inspired these talks starting over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And having been over two years, we're now at number 805. Quite a few talks, and I'll tell you at the back end of the broadcast where you find the links and replays. This, by the way, is my Facebook Live, so in case you're watching live, you can interact here. If you're watching it in replay on Facebook or on YouTube, you can comment there as well. So again, topic today is who do you think you are and how that question affects every relationship and I know it's this is going to touch on a little bit about the roles we play but it's more about how we have a relationship with ourselves whilst we're in a relationship, relationship with other people let me try that one again I, was, I tried to brush it out the deeper question is going to is probably going to be something in the lines of because I don't know yet we're not there yet is the, is the question about relationship, relationship you have with yourself whilst you're in a relationship with other people and it's not just romantic relationships. It also could be employment, social, religious, health, spiritual, all sorts of different areas of relationship, relationships you have. The, the shush is going to get in my way if I keep going this way. The relationships that you have that are impacted by your relationship with yourself. So I want to bring some things and unpack some things here to give you some clarity and direction and also invite you for some next steps too. So I'm preparing you to know that I will put out an invitation at the back end you might want to check out or check into. I'll check out, check into, that's better, better. So, most of us have this I'll say ability, habit, desire, need to fit in. And part of that fitting in is we tend to, adopt, tend to adopt roles in life and in relationship to other people that allows us to be more accepted, more appreciated. There are very few people, I believe, who are out there going, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, I don't care about anybody else, especially in relationship. In fact, if you're in a relationship with somebody like that, you probably don't want to be with them because they have such a um, gallant disregard for who you are and for your participation in that relationship. But bringing it back to ourselves, the work I've been doing recently, and it's funny, I just had a, re I just had a chance to work with a coach today, co coaching me, yes, I do get coached, about the recognition is that one of my strengths, one of my points of position, and why I do the, what I've been talking about recently for the last year or so, is about being home inside myself and that's one reason I created my um, self-love meditation last year for those people who want to find a way back to themselves in a more self-love supportive way but also how I help people to get come home to themselves which is actually the name of the course I created that's why it came out that way which is an online course I'll tell you about that at the back end as well which is really about the relationship we have with ourselves in the world because most of us are externally referenced externally triggered externally um, focused which is kind of understandable. We have that in all of our natures. But sometimes that becomes the, a predominant overriding choice versus being self-oriented first and re really focusing on who we are and also what we're reacting to out in the world. And since I've done some, I've done some talks previously about how we maintain a relationship with ourselves, and again, I'll put some links in the back end for you to check out or check into, but also it's this thing about do we inquire when we're in relationship with other people, about who we're being at the time. Now, some of you are, I know, because some of you are on this path and journey and growing and learning, but some people are oblivious to that. And if you know anybody like, like this, because it's not you, of course, um, you might want to share this with them. Because this is the thing. A lot of times in our lives, we're so... Um, what's the word I want to use? Submissive isn't the right word. But it's like we have a default to go to when we're in certain people in positions of power or authority or control something in our lives. So it could be politicians, it could be celebrities, it could be somebody you're enamored by, want to be with, it could be um, one of your teachers, 
a facilitator of a workshop you've taken, any one of those people, you could find yourself in a place where you're basically feeling su um, supplicant, submissive is not the right word, there's another word looking for it. Just put it simply, less than. <laughs> is that clear enough? And that dance of relationship, that dance of feeling less than, can impact your, well, one, impact your self-esteem, but secondly, it'll impact your ability to freely express yourself. And I'm speaking from experience, because I've been here many times and done it quite a few times, and occasionally still do, so I'm going to listen to this myself as I speak to you. This is the nuance of this work, is that, well, the nuance for me, maybe not for you, but for me, is there's always a growing edge. There's always more to learn. There's always more to become and express and be available to in relationship to other people. It, it, I, mm, do you want to, yeah, okay, sorry. I, <laughs> if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this happens. Stuff comes through and sometimes I've got to figure out how to articulate it and put it in a way that makes sense because it's oftentimes self-exposing. Yes, flashing you, so to speak. Um, I was in an event last night and I got to be in an interesting place because it was a friend's event and I'm, I need to send an email to her to thank her. It was a great chance to be there. Um, there was a spoken word and a storytelling event uh, that my friend Wendy Hammers promoted. And I've been to this event, um, actually, it's the first, this is actually the first time, I've known Wendy for years, but it's the first time I've been to her event and I got to work and help her with the event. But it was interesting because there's so many people and so many intersections of different communities that came together in this event. And thanks for the love, by the way, thank you. Appreciate the love that shows up in my broadcast. And it was interesting how people saw me differently because I met somebody there who was um, a major player, a major major presenter at KCRW, which I used to volunteer at for over 20 years ago over that time, in the pledge drives. So I was a volunteer. And she was actually surprised to find, that, one, that I was there, but secondly, what I'm up to, and she wants to now interview me for her podcast. That was a nice surprise. Um, I also bumped into some people who I'd been to. They had had a salon two years ago, which was a lot of music and performance and comedy and entertainment. And I didn't recognize them until I saw them together, husband and wife. And so I got, got to introduce them, and they recognized me, which is cool, so it was a nice little interaction. But the recognition, the thing was at this event of 120 odd people in the audience, plus there were a bunch of people from Agape who were performing there, which is kind of called my, my, my home base for spirituality. But it was such a, a diverse array and and blend of people who I knew and who knew me. And what was interesting was, and just to give you the point of this to go with the story, <laughs> is that some of them know me as who I am, some of them don't. And so what I was watching how is how I was either going, what happened last night for me actually was good, is I didn't flex, I didn't bend, I didn't sort of adapt to where they were, I just stayed true to myself. And so they changed their opinion of me, which was like, that was cool. That was a side effect, by the way, it wasn't the primary focus. But what I realized being what I was doing that night was, was serving, making a difference, even to the, the, the woman, not barmaid, it's such a cheap term, but the woman working behind the bar, young girl, and just because she kept on apologizing because she couldn't do something, I kept telling her, stop apologizing, because she wasn't the one causing the issue anyway. She was just reporting the facts. And so I was almost counseling her right there to say, there's no need to apologize. You just let us know what's happening or what's not happening, and we have to adapt to that. You're simply giving us the information, so don't apologize, which is kind of like a little coaching thing in the moment. But what I recognized in the event last night is that I kept myself, I maintained myself in a very grounded place, which is something that's not, it's not unusual, but it's also not something I've been consistent at of late. So it's good to have that reminder to myself to own that space. So I'm offering that as a reminder to you, an invitation to you to watch where you don't own your own space, your own consciousness, your own presence, wherever you are. Because the thing about it was interesting is for many of us, we are almost like chameleons. Yes, chameleons, you know, those, those, those lizards that change color to fit the environments. Meaning that we adapt to the environments we're in and we don't always stand true in our values everywhere we go. What I'm actually speaking to is what I'm, maybe what I'm encouraging and inviting you to do because it's something I'm working on more powerfully and it's something that I'm actually, actually already innately attuned to but I want to assist you with is how is it you can be maintaining your self-esteem, your self-support, your self-alignment, wherever you are, which includes self-confidence, self-trust, self-acceptance, all these different things that I've talked about many times before. So even in romantic relationships, or in business relationships, or in environments where there's a speaker, leader, teacher who's up there in the high levels of expertise, where well, you don't give up who you are for that place. And this is the thing, for many people, especially in a relationship and around people who are, they, tr they put a lot of, um, they put them on pillars, so to speak. 
is we tend to abandon ourselves in that situation. So if you've got issues with self-abandonment, listen up. This is part of that piece, part of the puzzle for you. Staying true to ourselves, even when we go to seminars, workshops, teachings, trainings, um, lectures, conferences, um, etc., etc., where there's somebody on stage who's like this main speaker, are you one of the people that falls into a place where they are on a pillar, on, uh, they're on the, because they're on the stage, you put them on a pulpit or on a elevated place which you don't accept for yourself? The self abandonment is prolific, I know, in, the, in our world because there are those of us who don't own our space. Not to say that we're more important than, it's just to say that they're not more important than. Yeah, I'm saying that. Recognizing who we are as valid, as valuable, as honorable, as all these different things is a vital piece of coming home to ourselves. It also changes our relationships, especially romantic ones, where we don't give up who we are for the other person. This is gonna lead, yeah, okay, this, this is gonna lead into codependency because I've talked about this so many times. But the thing about it is when we start giving up who we are for our partners, we start changing who we are to fit the other person, we stop owning our space and stop claiming what we want in a relationship, because a lot of people do that. We're actually disowning ourselves and we're actually disrespecting our partner. And this is the thing that is backwards in a way for some people. It's almost like we feel like we need to adapt to our partner. It's not just me, I think. <laughs> I did that for a while, over a dozen years ago, so I can just be clear about that. So. For those people who have this issue, this challenge, this default behavior, again, listen up, this will help you. Being in a relationship with somebody else does not mean you need to change to be something you're not. I'll say that again because it's subtle, but it's important. Being in a relationship with somebody else does not mean changing yourself to fit them to give away who you are. That's a different way of saying it. I'm going to say it another way because it's going to be a bit clearer. Let me say it this way around. Who you are is already worthy. Who you are is already deserving. Who you are is already autonomous, whole, healthy, complete. So being right, anybody else shouldn't change, won't change that if you're willing to own it. This is kind of the nuanced work I do with my clients because what comes up a lot of the times is they're not sure they can actually own and be valid, can, oh, sorry, own and value who they are around certain people, particularly prospective partners. So in the relationship quadrant or in the relationship qu um, arena, it's tempting sometimes to give up our authority, our power, our truth, to make somebody else feel better. Again, I don't think it's just me, I think other people do this one too. And when we become fully autonomous in owning who we are, we respect ourselves and appreciate who we are fully, then the other person, first of all, can trust that because we're being solid, consistent, and reliable. Because one of the challenges is when we adapt to fit the other person, the other person's going, okay, you keep changing, who are you? ex-girlfriends did that to me so okay <laughs> just to be transparent but you may have this experience too or maybe it's the other way around is when you're in a, a sense is when you're with another person in a relationship and you attempt to be with them you actually you know become more important more self-important more ego driven saying like, I'm tough enough I'm good enough I'm, I'm special enough to be with that person when you're actually putting on a mask or actually putting on a shell of who you're not so you can fit in with that environment too so it works both ways so either you're undercutting and playing down to be with the other person, or you're putting yourself up to be with the person you're supposed to be with. This is the thing. Both of them are lies. Both of them are traps, because it means you have to maintain something you're not as long as you can till you give it up. And either way, when you do give it up, the other person will see you as you really are. Hopefully they've already seen you the whole way through. But if they see you as you really are, they might be either disappointed or challenged by it. And it won't work out very well for you in the relationship. So dropping the masks, dropping the shells, dropping the, the false appearances to own who you are, to respect who you are, and to honor who you are in a relationship is perhaps the biggest challenge we face. Because our society and our environment that we live in, this Western world especially, is so adamant about teaching us we have to keep changing ourselves to fit into the environment that we're in. That somehow we're not good enough. Unless we have the right makeup, the right car, the right outfit, the right jewelry, act like they do in the certain TV shows or in the movies where we have to have to take the, the right drugs so we don't have side effects and all this sort of crap. All that stuff is marketed to that little piece in us that is not worthy. Or excuse me, that little piece in us that doesn't believe that we're worthy because that's the thing, it's a lie. So a false belief that we're not worthy is what undercuts our ability to be whole. The funny thing is, we already are whole and we already are worthy. We just, we run beliefs, that's why I say, who do you think you are? 
know who do you feel you are who do you think you are because oftentimes we think in here something that's not as true as we really not the truth of who we are I'm in here in this stand as a reminder to you that you already are worthy you already are whole you already are fully embracing yourself and yes you may have some emotional baggage you haven't resolved yet you may have some other challenge you haven't resolved yet that stuff you can work on to change you it doesn't but the thing is that stuff that's not who you are I'm not saying you can just drop it but the reality is when you have past history baggage upset wounded hurt feelings etc etc they don't define you unless you let them this is a bit of a deeper talk I knew it was going to be this way because I was having some reflections today from the person I work with who was coaching me that one of my strengths is anchoring in that place for my clients one of the biggest things I give my clients is a safe place that is is solid and immovable and they can trust that so my reminder to you is you have the same gift inside of you if you're willing to claim it and remember that you already are it there's nobody to go there's nothing to get there's nothing to do unless you want to get support in healing that past baggage than owning your space honoring who you are and respecting yourself this is kind of my core work of my with my coaching and frankly even though my work has been about helping people attract amazing relationships the truth is the amazing relationship I'm really let me try it again <laughs> even though most of my work has been about helping my clients and attract amazing relationships what I'm really about is helping them have an amazing relationship with themselves that's my secret weapon <laughs> so if you're realizing that's your issue too hang around there's a couple of links I'm gonna put in the comments so you can check out this is really so simple in some ways at the same time it's so potent because we forget so easily but the remembrance process the release process the transformation to understand who you are and to and to heal the stuff that's in the way because a lot of stuff is in the way isn't going to move to you heal it it's the way we are as human beings but when you do so you'll come back to who you are and own who you are i've been in this work now for over 30 35 years now whoa am i that old i guess i am yeah so uh, <laughs> this has been my part of my my growth path for the last 35 years so i kind of have some experience and having recognized that and having been through so many journeys myself and so many layers of this myself I'm really clear that it's easy to do once you get there but of course I'm not going to say it takes 35 years to get there so I'm going to put some links in the comments for you because if this is something that resonates for you or is triggering for you I want to invite you to talk to me about it so um, and I'll give you also the links to find my replays in case you haven't seen my broadcast before because if you've seen me for the first time this is episode 805 where have you been <laughs> so I appreciate you being with me as always um, so a couple of things first the links that I'm going to put in the comments you can check out afterwards one of which is the um, one from there. well I'm going to put the book in the comments because I mentioned that at the beginning I'm also going to put the link in the comments for the self-love practice because I mentioned that it is a powerful elegant simple self-study practice you do on your own well with my audio tracks and there's audio tracks and a bunch of other things in it that help you get into a place of loving yourself fully respecting yourself and appreciating yourself I'm also going to put the link in the comments for my group program, which I haven't launched yet. I'm still holding off on a few more members. It's a beta test right now, so it will have a pay what you want structure called Coming Home to Yourself. And lastly, I'll put a link, maybe in the other order, a link for you to reach out and talk to me. Um, I'm not going to put in the. Um, what I'm going to put in the, is not the normal discovery session link. I'm actually going to put a contact form link in this. You can reach out to me and tell me you want to get some support, because this is for everybody. So it's not just relationship centric, it's for anybody who wants to get some support. So those four links will be in the comments. Actually, I'll put a fifth link. <laughs> I will put this conversation link in there if you actually are in relationship challenges and you want to get some clarity, some help. If you're single and want to heal your heart and get, so, get some, some transformation that way, that'll be in the comments too. So it's five links I'm putting in the comments for you today. It's one of those days. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live I do on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. And it's at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week, seven days a week right here. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, the replays are on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page and watch them there. Or alternatively, if you want to, watch it, want to watch them on YouTube, because YouTube is easy to peruse in my playlist, I have a playlist called Messages from the Masculine on my channel, which I invite you to subscribe to, which is Barry Selby. So that's where you can find the replays. I'm going to send these to be five links in the comments. If you want to reach out for help over social media, you can just message me. That works too. But I invite you to check out the links I put in the comments, because they will help you individually and collectively know who you are own who you are and stop thinking you're not that's the easy way to do it but if you want some help with that that's what i'm here for 
So this made some sense to you. I didn't see any comments, so I trust that you got some value from this. If you want to reach out for support, you know where to find me. The links will be there as I promised. I do invite you as always, please take care of yourself. This is a reminder to do that in so many ways, as I do every day. And with that, I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.